dare to walk this path with me? One misstep, and we fall to our ruin. So take your first step. It's now or never! What is up, YouTube? It's RS Mario here, bringing you a Fire Emblem Three Houses video. Woo! Alright, so, um, yeah, I'm not on camera for this one, mainly because right now it's about 69 degrees, and, and that's at, like, what, 1 a.m. <laughs> when I'm recording this? So, um, I didn't want to cut the lights on. I, I, was wait, I waited for a while to see if it was going to cool down, but it didn't. Uh, so I didn't want to cut the lights on and make it extra hot and then have to cut the fan on which makes it extra loud So I decided just to do the video like this. Uh, it's not a lot of information That came out of Famitsu. Uh, actually the way they were talking about like the floodgates are gonna open I kind of expected a bit more, but we did get something. It's, 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 it's pretty interesting uh, So we got some nice screenshots some some from gameplay information some character bios So let's roll uh, so first off, one thing, the, the spelling of Byleth seems to be different for male and female, which is interesting. Not to mention, for some reason, I don't know why, but the, the female Byleth kind of stands out to me. Not in a bad way, like, honestly. She, like, she looking pretty, pretty, pretty waifu ready right now. Like, <laughs> if she wasn't the Avatar, she would definitely be my waifu in this game. But definitely, um... You can't, I can't really glean a lot from the screenshots because most of the gameplay stuff is very small and it's all in Japanese. But they do, they did, uh, the, the, the gameplay bio, the gameplay bios, the character bios were translated. Uh, so this one is actually coming from Nintendo Everything. Um, so let's go. So of course the, the uh, bio for Byleth, or they just call him protagonist, so... I'm assuming that because of this, you can rename him, which uh, is, is interesting. I mean, that's pretty much something they've done for every avatar in, in Fire Emblem. So, I mean, I guess that confirms that he is an avatar and not, you know, just a regular dude. Um, so, basically, you start off as a mercenary working in your father's mercenary group. Uh, and then your mom has already passed away. Uh, so, you live with your dad as a mercenary. So, of course, your dad is named Geralt. Kind of like, uh, you know, Geralt. And um, he's basically a... Le now, the thing is, I've seen several translations. And every one of them says this the same way. So, I'm guessing that this is exactly the way it is. It says, Geralt, a legendary being, is, uh, who is also said to be the strongest knight in history. So, is he human? <laughs> I mean, because they say a legendary being. Like, he's a legendary something. He may not be human. And I'm like, really? Like, a legendary being? Like, okay. I'm thinking maybe it could be a mistranslation or it could be something that is changed in translation. Um, but, yeah, it definitely says a legendary being. But, uh, so basically, he's a legendary knight who used to work in the Knights of Sorrows. And the, basically, the reason why you were on your way to the monastery anyway is because your father is being pulled back into the service again. So he's basically going back into the Knights of Sorrows. So basically, I'm thinking this is mainly because of the war going on with our evil Jagan dude that I covered in my last theory, which you can look at in the card and in the description down below. Um... So I'm thinking that's why they're bringing him back. Maybe they're bringing back other veterans as well to maybe help lead the new recruits. Or maybe they're doing this because they've taken heavy losses and they just need people who can fight. So this kind of brings up some interesting questions about Geralt and his role in the story. Like, uh, I think two things are going to happen. Either, well, maybe three things. Uh, either A, he's going to be like the old Jagan character of your team. If you don't know what a Jagan is, basically, uh, they call a Jagan character in Fire Emblem is just an older, usually male character that is on your team. I guess if you wanted to think about in Fire Emblem Fates, it's like the old dude that is like protecting you and he like falls off the bridge or whatever in one of the cutscenes. He's like, he's a Jagan character essentially. Um, so he, so Geralt can be a Jagan character that's on your, that's on your, that's in your army, 
Or he is going to be uh, an evil character. Well, not an evil character, but a character that you're going to have to fight. Because if he's part of the Knights of Syros, and if this church is possibly evil, you could end up fighting against your father, which will be a pretty interesting dynamic. I mean, you know, will he forgo honor of being one of the greatest knights ever because he doesn't want to fight his son? Or does he put honor over everything and go to blows with you? Or he's going to die, which more than likely is the case. I wouldn't be surprised if there, if uh, you know he doesn't die and this, this is like the catalyst that throws you into the conflict because your father died. Uh, so Sothis, this is where it gets kind of weird. Uh, so basically Sothis is by, uh, by a, it's a, a mysterious girl who looks young but speaks in an old manner. Uh, she saved the protag. She saves the protag. That's literally the way they put it up there. The protag uh, at the fateful night. Uh, she normally doesn't show herself up, and she speaks with telepathy into your head, so no one except you notice her. Uh, so no one except you. See, I, I told you that the translation is weird. Grammar, you know, gr grammatically. Um, she also lost the memory of her true self. So I'm like, see, this is what kind of kills me. So I'm like, really? So she's an amnesiac? Like, come on, man. So basically, this kind of... I mean, she still could be evil. I mean, she still could be. I mean, because she could have lost the memory of herself. Maybe because they deleted it because she was evil. You know what I'm saying? So they kind of like erased her memory and locked her away so that she wouldn't be evil. Maybe in the hopes that she would get over this and become normal. So we have Edgelgard, uh, princess of the Adrestian Empire, who has been promised a position of the next empress. So we, we kind of knew that was coming anyway. We you know all three of them are heirs to their prospective empires. So we kind of knew this was coming anyway. Uh, it says she's a talented woman who has a cold, noble atmosphere. Um, Adrestian Empire has the longest history, which I've heard that somewhere else before as well, before this came out, that the Adrestian Empire is the oldest. I think they actually mentioned that in the trailer, if I'm not mistaken, the second trailer. Uh, many people here are more skilled in magic than bows. So, I mean, in weapons, than weapons. So, basically, Edgelgard, or her people, are more skilled toward magic than they are toward using regular weapons, which is which is interesting. Um, Dimitri is the one that kind of interests me, though. So, he's an eloquent youth who has good manners and embroiled chivalry, but he somehow holds a shadow. So, kind of like a dark side to him. Um, and uh, which is kind of interesting seeing as though he runs the holy kingdom of Fergus that he has a dark side um, so that's kind of interesting to see w what is that like w what's, his, what's he hiding what's his dark side perhaps because the holy kingdom of Fergus is known for its knights many of the students are good with spears so of course he has a spear his people are good with spears they're good spear people Claude, uh, a friendly youth whose smile fits him well, although he doesn't seem like he's thinking of things too deeply, he has a sharp insight. Compared to other classes, the Golden Deer has more commoner students. Uh, many of them are also good at using bows. So that's also kind of an interesting thing with him. So they, they did kind of note that, that you have one of two starting classes, either noble or commoner. Now, the, uh, they, ha they didn't really explain many of the differences between the classes, um, but they said that that's the two starting classes you have. So, you can either start as a noble, and then you can kind of, like, class to different classes, or you start off as a, 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 a commoner and then try to, you know, class up, I guess. <clears throat> So the gameplay changes. So here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So uh, the game is the game. They have confirmed that there is a rewind time system, uh, and this has been all but confirmed to be what 
uh, Byleth's power is. So, um, so yeah, so he can rewind time. So it's not Spidey Sense. It's not like Final Destination precognition. He can rewind time, but he can only do it one time per battle. So you only get one shot at this. So if you rewind time and screw it up, you know, you better you better hope that you have like a save that you can like, you know what I'm saying, go back to so you can try it again because you can't do it again in, for the rest of the battle. So that's pretty interesting. So they have terrain effects. So other than determining movement costs and evasion rates, some spots may have gimmicks uh, such as healing uh, HP or warping a character to another spot. Uh, so basically, uh, there's a screenshot. I don't know if I got the screenshot, but there's a screenshot where Edgeguard, um, she's she can move, but now usually Edgeguard can move five spaces. At least that's what we saw in the first trailer. And this one, she can only move four. Now, originally, when I first saw this the other day, because actually this particular screenshot came out yesterday, um, which will be day before yesterday for y'all. But um, <clears throat> I thought it was because the enemy was right there. You know, so like in Civilization, you can't move uh, adjacent to an enemy. You have to move away and then move adjacent, you know. I thought it was something similar to that, but maybe the reason why she only has four movement here is because of the tree line. So the game has two difficulty modes, as normal, and then it has hard, and then of course there is the cla uh, the casual and the classic mode. Um, so I mean that's I mean that's that's interesting. No no lunatic mode is weird because I really kind of wanted to try a lunatic mode. One. I've never messed around with lunatic mode. Um, but I guess I'll, I'll have to try that on maybe Echo, uh, maybe Awakening. Um, let's see. Class Change. Okay, now uses a qualification system. So, this one is interesting. I actually read about this a couple different places. So, basically, the way you change classes now, classes are completely different. So, they're not like what they were in regular Fire Emblem games, which, I, in a regular Fire Emblem game, a class is a job. Right? So, like, jobs and RPGs, a class is a job. So, you know, you, you wear the armor of that class or the clothing of that class. You use the weapon of that class. And you're, you're that class because that's your job. Now, in this game, it's literally a class. Like, you're literally learning it. So, you use your pretty much your same uniform. Um, I think it probably will have some changes depending on the class. And you actually have to take an exam to see if you can even take that class in the first place. And it's 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 kind of chance-based. So the higher your skill um, stat is, the better off the better chance you have of actually being able to pass the exam and, and you know change classes. So it's actually kind of interesting that they bring that school dynamic into it. So you can't just reclass, like, oh I can't just go from bowman to warrior like no you have to take an exam if you pass the exam then you can go to warrior you know so the only thing i i think is going to be interesting is uh higher skill based classes like archers are they going to be harder to get into you know like i mean and not to mention you have like uh classes like uh warrior who has the axe and axe users usually have lower skill uh, growths anyway in Fire Emblem, so will will an axe user be harder to reclass because they have slower growth and skill? That will that's an interesting thing. You know, it makes you really think about your classes now. Like, oh, if you want to consistently reclass, do you want to mess around with the axe? You know, the axe class, or, or or not? You know, will that make it harder for you to reclass later? I think it's interesting. It's an interesting concept. Um, I hope it's executed well, though. Uh, of course, once a class is unlocked, you can go back at any time, because, I mean, why not? Uh, your level doesn't reset when you change classes, which is also pretty good. Um, let's see. So, you, you, can't, you, can't take, you can't change classes until you hit level 5, which is uh, also pretty interesting. Okay, and so all the skills 
that you get from your classes. Uh, so you have sword skill, spear skill, axe skill, bow skill, physics, which is basically black magic and dark magic, which is kind of interesting seeing as though black magic and dark magic have, have always been like kind of the same. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so I'm guessing black magic is like your your typical RPG black magic, you know, lightning, ice, fire, you know, elemental damaging magic. And then dark magic is actual like, you know, I, I can suck your energy away, you know, kind of like magic, you know. So that's kind of, that's interesting that they have that kind of dichotomy there. Uh, of course, faith is white magic. Uh, flying is, of course, your flyer classes like your your worm riders, your your uh, Pegasus knights. Heavy armor goes for your big heavy classes, and of course, horse riding is for your cavalry classes. Uh, so that's that's all pretty interesting. Um, and the last bit of information is each character has good and bad ranks. So each character has kind of like something that they're think like Pokemon. You know, Pokemon. Each Pokemon has a good EV and an EV that's kind of garbage. Uh, they have a they have a, a a nature that gives them a, a good stat and one stat they grow slowly. S similar something similar to that is going to be in Fire Emblem, where they'll have something that they're really good at and something that they kind of suck at. You know, so uh, that's about it. Uh, I mean, I'm going to do another video where I analyze the screenshots more closely. I'm going to look around to see if I find any further translations. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Like, comment, subscribe, and as always, folks, keep it all real.